Francis Cotis was born in the island of Paros to George and Maria on February 12, 1897. In his teens, he went to work in Piraeus. At 23, he began to read the lives of the fathers, a spiritual turning point for him. These lives, particularly those of the strict ascetics and a dream he had, gave him the desire to enter into monasticism. He responded to this desire by fasting and praying in a nearby countryside which was uninhabited and then going to Mount Athos. The future elder yearned to pray unceasingly but had great troubles. He could not find a spiritual father and the indifference of many monks towards unceasing prayer. I was inconsolable because I was longing for ardently to find what I had set out for in search of God and not only was I not finding it but people would not even be helpful. In the midst of this experience, however, he was granted a vision of the uncreated light and the gift of ceaseless prayer was given to him. At once I was completely changed and forgot myself. I was filled with light in my heart and outside and everywhere, not being aware that I even had a body. The prayer began to say itself within me. During this time, he had spent time in remote places to recite the Jesus prayer. Eventually, he met Father Arsenios, who was to be his co-struggler, and found that they shared a common desire for hesychism and decided to find an experienced elder. They found Elder Ephraim, the barrel maker, and arranged their lives to provide the maximum silence for praying the Jesus prayer. In addition to his work and his prayer rule, Father Joseph went to a cave at sunset to recite the Jesus prayer for six hours. After Elder Ephraim, the barrel maker's repose, Father Joseph and Father Arsenius spent summers moving from place to place around the peak of Mount Athos so as to be unknown and to find and learn from spiritual monks. In winter, however, they returned to their hut in the wilderness at St. Basil. They possessed only their tattered monk garments and Father Joseph ate three ounces of rusks a day, sometimes with an amount of boiled wild greens. They spoke little so that they could pray more. Father Joseph was assailed by the demo demon of fornication around this time, and he would battle with this great temptation for eight years, using as weapons for extended vigils and using instead of a bed a chair to sleep on. Finally, Father Joseph and Father Arsenius discovered an unexperienced aesthetic life and spiritual father, Elder Daniel. Time passed and the fame of Elder Joseph began to spread. After Father Arsenius ceded the eldership that was his right by length of time in monasticism, Elder Joseph accepted three brothers to live with them. With each others living with them for short periods of time. In 1938, seeking solitude from the increasing number of monks who sought his advice, he went to a cave at Little St. Anne's where the brotherhood grew to seven monks. After approximately 13 years, the large amount of physical labor required to live there because too much making most of the fathers ill. Elder Joseph moved the community further down the mountain, nearer to the sea, to New Skeet. Elder Joseph reposed on August 15, 1959. In October 2019, the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople officially recognized Elder Joseph and four other holy monks Hieronymus of Simona Petra, Elder Daniel and Ephraim of 
Katunakia, and elders Sophri of Essex as saints of the Holy Orthodox Church. <laughs>